Fundamentals is all about you. And because it's about you, we asked ourselves, what are the top five questions that we've gotten from viewers? And we'll help answer that today. The top three are from you, a lot of the viewers, and the top two are from me, from my experiences with viewers and from various people asking about money. So let's get started in today's episode. Again, I'm Edric Mendoza and this is Fundamentals. Okay, so ang unang tanong, the first question comes from Ralph Joseph Rosco Mascarinas. He asks, what does it look like to transition from an employee to full-time entrepreneur? What to consider and what to prepare? So, my suggestion, if you want to transition from an employee to a full-time entrepreneur, you want to ask yourself some hard questions and then some practical questions. The hard question is, do you have what it takes to be a full-time entrepreneur? Can you handle risk? Can you handle the 24 hours of always being liable and responsible for that business as opposed to working for a company where may office hours, after that you can shut down. So those are some hard questions. Do you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? The second part are now the practical questions, right? And when I say practical, the questions would be, will it provide enough for what you need in terms of finances? Do you have the funding necessary to be able to kickstart that venture? And I guess the most practical and important question is, is it a viable business that you will be going into full time, right? Because when I say viable business, marami pong layers yan, but you wanna ask yourself, is it a need of people today? Do you have a unique story or set of, of uh, skills and abilities to be able to make that need something that stands out from what everyone else is doing. So those are a couple of practical questions you want to ask as you look at entrepreneurship. And one final thought in this question, Ralph, no, is baka naman pwede mong gawin is you're trying the business out while you're working so that you can answer the hard questions and the practical questions. And if all of it says go, at that point, you can jump into being a full-time entrepreneur. Right, that's what I would suggest you do. You need to count the cost before you go. Let's move to question number two. What's number two? Number two is from Chill Paloma Albasin. Ang sabi niya, investment opportunities for teens. We appreciate guidance on how to make our money grow. So if you're a teenager right now, my suggestion is two things. First, because you are young, you can take bigger risks over a longer period of time. Right? So you look at investment opportunities that have higher return but require higher risks over a period of time. So you can look at things like stocks, equities, uh, things of that nature. And if you want added guidance, I would encourage you attend these free seminars and free things online. There's many of them. You can even look, go to your local bank that's near you or near where your parents are banking and ask them, speak to a relationship manager or one of the people that can answer the questions on investment products that are available in that local bank. So it's easy for you to connect the investment to the bank that you're brand, the branch of the bank that you are in so that there's easier access. Now, if you are a parent, kung kayo pong magulang and you want your teen to get started, what are the opportunities? My suggestion is, first, you have to see if there is desire. The last thing we want for our children, whether they're teens or younger, is we force them to go into investing and doing these things. It will not go very far. Let's move to question number three. So, ben Carpio says, what's the best way to start an investment? We talked about options for teenagers, but the question is, how do start? And we get this question a lot, actually, everywhere. The best way to get started is to start. <laughs> do something right now, right? So, for example, Ask yourself a very simple question. Do you have 1,000 pesos, 5,000 pesos? What amount can you start with right now to try investing? Once you've set that amount in your mind, go to the nearest access point. So if you have a salary that you're receiving from a company, look to the bank that's giving you that salary or that, that's banking that salary that you're receiving and ask them the same question that I said for the teenagers earlier. What investments can I put in? And I would suggest start with something simple like pooled funds, mutual funds, UITFs, get started. You can do that by just asking that bank branch 
where you can put that 1,000. And I would suggest as you get started, you can now start asking big questions. Once you've gotten that and you've been able to set that money in, you can even do it digitally, put the money in, transfer it from your account straight into an investment option that makes sense for you. What you can do after that is ask the bigger questions, which would be questions like, where is this money going, right? What is your goal for it? Once you start going there, you can start moving your investments from pumaat naglagay ako ng 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 to a continuing process of investing and you must invest it towards those goals. What is it for? Which leads us to question number four. Ito po, one of the most popular questions I receive. I have many financial goals. How do I figure out which one to work towards first? Oh, so ito, itong taong to is now able to say, you know what? I've identified the goals, pero marami. For example, like me, I'm a dad. I have goals for the education of my kids. I have goals for travel. I have goals for house upgrade or renovation. But I'm in goals. But how do you prioritize is the question that I get, no? The fourth question and one of the most popular ones I get. So I would suggest in order to figure out which of the goals to prioritize, you need to make sure that each of the goals has a plan first. Just like the question I answered earlier. The best way to start an investment, just get started, try it out, simple, easy, get into it, and then start building the goals. No? When you're looking at these various goals, in order to prioritize, if you have a plan in achieving each one. For example, for me to hit my housing goal, I want to build a house. If that's your goal, kailangan ko ng ganitong pera and I need to save it and invest it over five years or 10 years. Once you've done all of that, what I would do is I would separate all of my goals into three main buckets. Ano yung mga buckets na yan? Short-term goals, zero to two years. Medium-term goals, three to five years. And then long-term goals, more than five years. Once you've been able to sort that out and you have a plan on how to achieve each one, then you now want to ask yourself to help prioritize better which ones do I really need and I cannot live without and which ones are just nice to have. So I hope that that's a good filter for you. Break it into years, break it into the needs and the wants, and then break it into urgency. Which of the goals that are remaining are things that you really need to happen soonest? Prioritize those first because the impact is greater if it doesn't happen when you need it. Okay, let's go to the last question. Now, one of the most popular questions that I get right now have to do with the world of crypto and these new currencies and these new options, if you will, for investing. Um, there are also platforms related to this that have to do with gaming, where they also use uh, crypto. So I like to call these the relatives, so yung mga ng cryptocurrency. So how do I go about navigating this new world of investing? Um, how do I know what's appropriate for me? So I would go back to kind of what I said earlier. Now look at your goals. And from the goals, I would suggest, because cryptocurrency and the investments related to this are highly risky, I would encourage us to look at these things in two ways. Number one, we don't want to use these types of investments for our goals. It's not something you match towards a goal. It's something we can learn from. It's something we can add and financial planners will say anywhere from 1% to 5% of your total investment portfolio, you can put in this cryptocurrencies or in these type of very high risk related investments, no? But as you look at these things, another very important consideration is you can also look at it as an investment in education. You want to learn the space, which is my story. That's part of how I put money into the space. I want to learn it. So I put a little bit of money that I'm willing to lose because it is very risky. Now, I'm not putting it to lose it, but I'm ready to lose it. That's very important. Finally, um, you can put it as a form of uh, not only investing in your education, but you want to be able to do that so that um, you're protecting everything else. No? It is something that you're just adding on to the rest of your portfolio. Now, as I look at this space of digital and the re related products, I want us to ask a harder question. Have we actually thought about the world of eternal investing? What does that mean? One of my passions is being able to make sure that I work my investment towards the goals for my family, for our needs, but I also look at eternal investing because alam po natin, none of the things we have in this life can, carry, can be carried over into the next. 
So we want to ask what are the things that will carry on into the next, such as helping those who are less fortunate. At napag-usapan ko na po yan if you watch the Fundamentals episode on giving. So go back to that. And in my heart, what I love about that is the whole idea that it is really better to give than to receive. Could it be that as we're answering this question about other forms of investing such as crypto, and we talked about this in the top five, we need to ask that more important question is, are we so focused right now more on receiving and getting something for ourselves that we forget to open up our hands and look to give? And I said this before, when we open up our hands to give, as you're seeing in my hands right now, then we have an opportunity to actually receive more. So look at ways to give, even as you look at these investments and answer all these questions, so that as you do, you will see this most irrational financial principle I have ever experienced, which is again, the more we give, the more we're able to receive. So thanks again for asking these questions. If you have more questions, tanong nyo po. Put it into our, our different social media channels and we'd love to answer your questions to help you improve your money, spending, and behavior and habits.